Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, and in this video I'm going to feature a mushroom that, to many people, is considered to be edible and quite good. And this mushroom is eaten around the world wherever it grows, and if you pick up some field guides, especially the older mushroom field guides, you're going to read that this mushroom is edible and tasty. However, if you pick up some more recent field guides, you're going to read that this mushroom is poisonous, it's toxic, and should not be consumed. So the mushroom in question is the angel wing mushroom, Pleurocybella perigens. So how did this mushroom go from being edible and good to poisonous and should not be consumed? Well, in 2004, unexpectedly, over 50 cases of food poisoning were reported due to consumption of the angel wing mushroom, with 17 of those cases ending up in death due to acute encephalopathy. And encephalopathy is a general term to describe a brain disorder that affects brain function or structure. Now, despite many efforts to identify the underlying causes of these events, nothing conclusive has been determined. Now, there's way more to the story than what I just described. Before I get into the potential toxicity associated with the angel wing mushroom and the controversy surrounding this wild mushroom, let's actually go see if we can find some angel wing mushrooms because I'm in the right habitat. I'm in conifer woods. There's a lot of eastern hemlock trees. That's where this mushroom tends to grow. It's the right time of the year. It's mid-autumn, and I'm in the right bioregion. So the northern hemisphere, the temperate regions of the northern hemisphere. So I have a good feeling we're going to find some angel wing mushrooms. Let's go see if we can actually find them. So here's an excellent fruiting of angel wing mushrooms, Pleurocybella perigens. That species name perigens means spreading because of the growth habit. And Pleurocybella is a monotypic genus, meaning it's very easy to master. There's only one species in that genus, which is this one, the angel wing mushroom, Pleurocybella perigens. Now, you're probably looking at this saying, this kind of looks like an oyster mushroom. And you're right, it does look like an oyster mushroom. For many years, this was placed in the oyster mushroom genus, which is the Pleurotus genus. But if you're interested in positively identifying, confidently identifying foraging for oyster mushrooms, then stay tuned because after I tell you how to identify this one, the angel wing mushroom, I'm going to compare and contrast this fungus to at least two oyster mushroom varieties. So first, let's start with the angel wing mushroom. The angel wing mushroom, Pleurocybella perigens, is a small, thin, white-fleshed fungus that decomposes wood. Each cap is typically between one and a half to four inches wide. And this is a pleurotoid fungus, meaning it resembles an oyster mushroom in shape with its fan or oyster-like cap that projects horizontally out from the wood. The cap's texture is typically smooth and usually pure white, at least when the mushroom is fresh. The underside of the angel wing mushroom contains a fertile surface of closely spaced white gills. These gills are decurrent, so they run down the entire length of the cap. On the edges of these gills, the mature spores are dispersed and the spores are colored white. In other words, the spore print of the angel wing mushroom is white. A key feature of the angel wing mushroom is that there is typically no stalk attaching the fruiting body to wood. So the word used in field guides to describe this stalkless feature is sessile, S-E-S-S-I-L-E, sessile. Keep this in mind because when we talk about some oyster mushrooms, you will see that a few species actually do contain stalks. Now the angel wing mushroom is an excellent white rot decomposer of wood and white rot fungi are among the few organisms in nature that are able to mineralize the lignin in wood due to the secretion of extracellular enzymatic complexes. The growth habit of the angel wing mushroom, how you'll find it growing, is scattered like this. You might see it growing by itself, just solitary, just one. Or you might see it growing in small clusters. And the key feature is that you're almost always going to see it on conifer wood, not necessarily deciduous wood. Although there are reports that it might grow on deciduous wood, almost always you're going to find it on conifer wood. Here in eastern North America, northeastern North America, I almost always see it growing on eastern hemlock tree wood. Dead trees, so standing dead trees, log stumps. This is a stump of an eastern hemlock tree. That's how I almost always see that. Keep that feature in mind. Angel wing mushroom, conifer wood, almost always. And the season of the angel wing mushroom is late summer through autumn. So now that we can identify the angel wing mushroom with confidence, let's compare and contrast it to a few oyster mushroom species. 
And there are a lot of oyster mushroom species. There are estimates that there are between 40 to 200 species in the Pleurotus genus. We're only going to feature two of the common ones that could be confused for the angel wing mushroom. Pleurotus austriatus, the common or the winter oyster mushroom, and Pleurotus pulmonarius, which is the summer oyster mushroom. First up, let's start with Pleurotus austriatus because it has a wide distribution and the season overlaps with the angel wing mushroom. Pleurotus austriatus, the common or the winter oyster mushroom, is a medium to somewhat large edible mushroom and choice edible mushroom that grows in overlapping clusters on wood, usually on hardwood logs, stumps, and standing dead trees. Rarely will you see Pleurotus austriatus decomposing conifer wood. Keep this in mind because remember, angel wing mushrooms tend to grow on conifer wood. Each cap of Pleurotus austriatus is typically between three to eight inches wide, and it's shaped like an oyster. While many oyster mushroom species are white, this one, Pleurotus austriatus, is usually darker, almost grayish brownish in color. The underside contains whitish gills that become yellowish in age. These gills are decurrent, so they run the complete length of the cap and down the stalk. Speaking of the stalk, Pleurotus austriatus typically has a short stalk, and it's usually off center, so it isn't directly underneath the center of the cap. Sometimes Pleurotus austriatus does not have a stalk, so this isn't a defining feature. The smell of Pleurotus austriatus ranges from fishy to mushroomy to an odor resembling anise. I've gotten all three smells from oyster mushrooms over the years, so definitely smell your oyster mushrooms whenever you find them and see what you think. The spore print of Pleurotus austriatus is pale lilac to whitish. Now Pleurotus austriatus is unique in that it tends to grow in the colder months of the year, so mid-autumn all the way through winter and even into early spring. If you're finding an oyster mushroom during these colder months and its color is tannish, grayish, or brownish, there's a good chance you're looking at Pleurotus austriatus. Pleurotus pulmonarius is another edible oyster mushroom that typically grows in the summer months. So many people refer to this as the summer oyster mushroom. Like Pleurotus austriatus, the summer oyster mushroom grows on hardwood logs, stumps, and standing dead trees, usually in clusters, though it's not uncommon to see it growing scattered or sometimes solitary. Unlike Pleurotus austriatus, the caps of the summer oyster mushroom are typically pure white. Remember, Pleurotus austriatus caps are a little darker, grayish, tannish, sometimes brownish. The fertile underside of the summer oyster mushroom contains whitish gills that are decurrent. The spore color produced by this mushroom is white or pale lilac. Pleurotus pulmonarius typically has a whitish stalk that attaches the mushroom to its substrate. So there we have two oyster mushroom varieties, and we already talked about the angel wing mushroom. Let's compare and contrast some of the big key identifying features between all these species, starting with the season. Angel wing mushroom typically grows in the autumn months. The oyster mushrooms, the summer oyster mushroom, clearly grows summer months through early autumn. The winter oyster mushroom, Pleurotus austriatus, that's a cold weather species, so late fall through winter through early spring. Whenever we look at the substrate, this is a big key identifying feature. The angel wing mushroom almost always grows on conifer wood, whereas those oyster varieties, those two that I described, almost always grow in deciduous wood. The size is different. Angel wing mushroom is typically smaller compared to the bigger sizes of the oyster mushrooms. The flesh is a little different. This one tends to be a little thinner compared to the thicker flesh of the oyster mushroom varieties. And the angel wing mushroom tends to be sessile, meaning it doesn't really have a stalk that attaches the cap to the substrate. Those oyster mushroom varieties sometimes do have stalks, and in many cases, they almost always have stalks, depending on which Pleurotus species you're talking about. But you'll usually see a little stalk in the Pleurotus species. This one almost always is sessile, no stalk whatsoever attaching this to the substrate. Okay, so here's another nice fruiting of the angel wing mushroom, Pleurocybella peringens. Some of it down here. There's a nice little cluster starting right here. Again, on conifer wood, this is an eastern hemlock tree stump. So let's revisit that original question of toxicity associated with the angel wing mushroom. Remember, in 2004, in Japan, so nowhere else, not in North America, but in Japan, over 50 people were poisoned after consuming this mushroom. 17 of them died due to acute encephalopathy. And more specifically, the myelin in their bodies became eroded. And the myelin is a protective coating surrounding the nerve fibers in the central nervous system. Now here's something very important to keep in mind. Almost all of these people were of older age and almost all of them were already undergoing hemodialysis for chronic renal failure prior to consuming the angel wing mushrooms. So almost all of them were older and had compromised kidney function. Since 2004, there have been some isolated incidences only in Asia, not in North America. No deaths have ever been associated with this mushroom here in North America. 
and currently researchers still don't know what might be so toxic about this mushroom. Various studies have been conducted on the toxicity associated with this mushroom, showing that it might be a cyanide compound, that it might be a polysaccharide compound, that it might even be an amino acid derivative known as pleurosabella azardine. I know people who consume this mushroom with no ill effects. Heck, you might be watching this video laughing right now saying, I consume this mushroom and I'm still alive. I don't suffer any ill effects. So what does Adam recommend? What do I recommend? I think the most responsible thing for me to recommend is to do more research yourself. There's plenty of research out there. You can access the literature using your favorite search engine. Type in Pleurosabella peringens toxicity and see what you think. I know plenty of people who consume this mushroom with no ill effects still because a lot of people are watching this video. I have a lot at stake. I'm going to say do more research yourself. I can't take responsibility for your actions. Make an educated decision yourself and take full responsibility for all of your actions. Personally, I don't eat this mushroom. I opt instead for the true oyster mushrooms in the genus Pleurotus. Okay, so the angel wing mushroom, Pleurosabella peringens. We covered a lot of information regarding this fungus, information that will only help you become a better and more successful and more skilled mushroom hunter. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna stay in touch, feel free to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. You can head on over to learnyourland.com, sign up for the email newsletter. We could stay in touch that way. You can also follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, at Learn Your Land. Thanks again for watching this video. Truly appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.